All right, we got a problem. The front window leaked. I think it was the front window anyway. We had one successful cool down in the fridge. We got it all the way cold. We warmed it back up. Everything was fine. The second cool down right after the dilution cycle start, uh, started, actually the fridge was almost to its base temperature. There was some kind of anomaly. The, the sensors show there was a spike in pressure and then everything got hot. So something let air into the, um, into the main vacuum chamber. Uh, very bad. Uh, it triggered all the safety interlocks, like all the mix went through the emergency blow off valve back into the dump. It was a, a whole thing, exactly what we don't want to happen. I'm not exactly sure what caused it, um, but the most likely candidate is the front window because we've had, you know, 20, 30 cool downs of this fridge with no vacuum problems. The second cool down after we replace the front window, suddenly we have a leak. So what I'm going to try to do today is remove the front window, pop it out, and then there, we only put in one of the two O-rings I designed in. There's a face seal O-ring on the bottom that it sits on, and then there's one that goes around the circumference of the window. We left that one out because it's hard to get in. So now we're going to actually use it. I'm going to use. I'm going to have to use vacuum grease and have to be, try to be very careful not to get it all over the place. And we're going to have to try to get that window to actually seat. So it'll be a bit of a challenge, uh, but we'll see how it goes. Okay, the grease we're going to use is this. A Pezion 101 grease. It's a hydrocarbon grease, silicon free. It has Teflon in it. It's designed for glass and metal and O-rings. So this is a good room temperature grease that we're going to use to try to make this uh, window fit. So just take off the um, uh, these guys. It'll drop down. Bayonet clamps. Okay, this is a tight fit. So once we're gonna okay. So we'll rotate, we'll drop, and then this part is gonna have to actually take off this front. And it's, it's really quick. So we go all the way down. Yeah. So we're going to have to pull it back as we go a little bit. Okay. Yeah. This is very good. Okay. That's it. Yeah. Okay. All right, we got it off. You can see the window. So we got to get in here and put in a second O-ring. Got to be really careful with these aero dusters. When you tip them over, they shoot out a liquid and it'll stain your optics. So just got to make sure you have them upright and not tilted too much. I think we found our problem. You see that? The uh, quartz cracked right along the edge there. And that crack is where our leak came from. So at least we know where the leak is from. We have another one of these, but we got to figure out why it cracked before we put this one back in there. 
or else we're just asking for the same thing to happen again. It's the next day. I brought the um, front plate home and I got in here with some deburring tools uh, on both these surfaces. Then I hit it with some high grit sandpaper and finally came in with a buffing wheel on a Dremel tool and uh, tried to clean up any possible little stress risers. I'm gonna clean it out now and then um, I'm gonna use the original window, the one that's cracked as a test fit once I get the O-rings in. So we'll see how it goes. Quite a lot of goo on there from the uh, sanding process. Of course, we're going to goo it up again pretty good when we put the uh, grease on it, so we'll just do our best here. All right, there's two O-rings that we're gonna use this time. There is this uh, 239 size O-ring, it's all Viton. For some reason, I've noticed that rubber rots in, our, in this lab, um, maybe because we're close to the ocean, but rubber doesn't have a long half-life. Definitely wanna use the Viton instead of Buna N. This one's going in the bottom and it's just gonna be a face seal that gets pressed down on by the glass. So it doesn't need grease. This one can just go in like this. So that one's in. Now the other O-ring is a smaller O-ring. This is the one we're gonna need to grease up. This one's gonna go into this bore. I'll test fit it first. So it goes in this bore right here and then it's gonna go around the circumference, hopefully. All right, I want to put them all the way because sometimes they're hard to get out. Um, all right, so that's going to go like that. Looks right. Okay, so now we'll grease it up. We'll insert it, and then I'm going to change my gloves and um, try to do a, uh, well, maybe I'll put a little grease on the window, but I'm going to get this O-ring nice and greased up. It's nice and slippery. Now I'll try to get it in without getting grease everywhere. That is harder to do than you might expect. on this inside surface everywhere just to make sure we got enough to make this work. Okay. Time to change gloves. A lot of the students want to reuse gloves and you know use them for a while and save money. Gloves are cheap. Save the equipment, use lots of gloves. Okay, so here's the, um, the window that broke. You can see there's this piece of glass that came off of it. Um, so what I'm gonna do is take that off and just blow this off, take a look at it. So there are some stress concentrations where this, where this break, this chip is. It definitely came off the edge. You can, it's hard to tell what's going on here. I'm gonna use this uh, to test fit. So I'm gonna try to get this in, make sure I can do it before I use the one remaining good piece. These, these are only a couple hundred bucks, so it's not that big a deal, but I want to uh, see if I can get it to fit. And we might just use this one. I Having this on top, it's not in the optical beam because we're only using the inside two inches of this four inch piece. So it might actually be fine to use uh, for now um, for testing. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do actually, I'm gonna put just a little bit of grease around this rim here. 
it's going to be hard to get in there. And that is going to help it. This is annoying because, you know, this stuff tends to get everywhere. And you, it, you definitely don't want grease on your optical surfaces. You can clean it off um, with soap and water, basically. But what I found, it's really hard to get an optic clean. It's like an art. Once you get it, once you get it dirty, it's kind of never the same. <laughs> Some people may have the ability to clean these things better than me, but I find it pretty hard. All right, so we're going to put this in here. Now, this glove is uh, got grease on it, so I'm going to change that one out too. All right, Jeb told me that I was never going to be able to get this in without uh, a special installation tool or something. So let's see if we can uh, prove him wrong. Um, he might be right. Ha ha! Victory! It's in. Took a little pushing. Um, made a little mess of the front window. Again, we can clean it up. But it's in there. You can see it's pretty flush. It's not... It's starting to compress the bottom O-ring, but the side O-ring is engaged. So I think this would actually hold up. So... Yeah, I think we should test it like this and see what happens. So. I'm going to put this front ring back on after cleaning it up a little bit. All right, so we got it in here. The O-ring is being activated. It looks decent. A little uh, cleaning wouldn't hurt it, but we can do that once it's on. Um, yeah, it's all on the top surface, I think. All right, looks good, time to reinstall. All right, it's installed. Now we'll uh, get Maj's help. Lift it into place. On there. Right. Now remember, this is quite the moment. Yeah. Yeah. Here for this, it's much easier than the black fridge in that you don't need to tighten uh, as much, and yeah. the vacuum will hold. Yeah. Uh, give me a All right, we're going to try cooling it. Well, we're going to try pumping it out and see how the uh, see if the vacuum holds. All right, we got to get liquid nitrogen, so we're going to go fill it up. Thought you guys might like to see some of the more dramatic parts of this. It's not so much workout now, but coming yeah, up it's heavy. For sure. This is your gym workout for the day. Yeah. Start off nice Do some curls as you carry it. <laughs>
So it turns out liquid nitrogen isn't quite as dangerous as everybody thinks. It's not great um, if you uh, drink it. Never drink it, that's like instant death. It'll expand in your stomach and kill you super fast. The interesting thing though is it's so cold it makes a vapor barrier, so when it hits your skin it kind of just rolls off without getting it too cold. The really dangerous parts are if you have something dipped in it, so like that metal um, hose that's carrying it, if that metal, if you touch that metal hose with your bare hands, it'll freeze and uh, instantly cause major problems. Um, also, if you have shoes that have like mesh on them like I do today, see the, uh, the dad shoes right here? If it goes through the mesh and gets in the shoe, it'll, you, you can cause some problems. So you gotta be a little careful of that. So one of the reasons we say closed toed shoes, you know, you don't have sandals or anything when you're handling this stuff in the lab. But overall, um, it's really not that dangerous. The, the, the sneaky danger is that if you're in an enclosed space with it and it replaces all the oxygen. So, you know, if you're taking an elevator, uh, you know, you gotta be a little uh, wary of the uh, liquid nitrogen. But overall, uh, one of the safer things we use that seem, it seems really dangerous, but in the end, it's, it's not too bad. Um, of course, you know, that you can get ice plugs in fridges and stuff, and if an ice plug develops, it can turn into a bomb. So you do have to be careful with it. And although you may think that this is uh, enough protection, actually, if you just set this here for maybe 10 seconds, you can see it freeze up. So uh, but it's not... Yeah, the vapor is cold. The vapor is going to, it will get you in trouble if you spend too much time near it. Um, that'll, you know, it'll freeze it pretty good. Also, people have this idea that everything gets to liquid nitrogen temperatures and suddenly is like glass and just shatters. This is trick. I think it's all these demos that science people do where they take a flower, like a rose, and they freeze it in liquid nitrogen and smash it. So people think like everything is like super brittle at low temperatures. It's not true. It's mostly the things with water in them that are brittle. But like the steels we use, the stainless steels that make up this uh, doer, you know, the the, the fiberglass composites that are in the G10, those are not that brittle at low temperatures. So it, it's not true that everything is a real, um, it is just like a shatter grenade waiting to go off. All right, so we'll know this guy is full um, through the advanced technology of when it starts fountaining out the top. There's basically a, um, there's basically a neck in there. And as soon as it hits the top of the neck, you get these thermoacoustic oscillations, which start vaporizing and you'll see just stuff just start shooting out the top and that's when we know it's full. It's real high tech. There we go. See it's starting to shoot everywhere. Oh, making a mess. Turn that off. All right, we're full. Now we got to get this thing back upstairs and now it weighs a ton. It's like a strongest man competition in the uh, physics department. Or strongest woman, we have plenty of uh, women doing these jobs. It's not that heavy. And if, you know, if we're smart, we actually bring down a dolly so we can wheel it around instead of trying to do this, but Majid needs to show off for the camera with oh. the... Uh, this, this is, uh, I'm pretty sure this is like a world's strongest man, right? With the Atlas stones. There you go. Probably weighs, what do you think? 80 pounds, something like that? Gotta be uh, rules against this. I actually think you cannot lift anything yourself above fifty pounds. Oh yeah. So if I uh, if I break my back. Fantastic, and we got it on video too. Which is which is fun. My, my favorite part of it, to be honest. Yeah, sitting in front of a computer all day is pretty boring. Yeah. This is the real life of an astrophysicist. That's right, or at least a physicist. <laughs> the, the astrophysicist may not agree. <laughs> Slowly drop this in there so it doesn't. Yep. That's all right. And we should have a plug. They're right there. All right. All right, we got the window in. It's currently pumping down and holding vacuum. 
So it looks good. We'll need to go through a full cycle here and, you know, put stresses on the window as we pump it down. Uh, as we pump it down, it gets, you know, uh, atmospheric pressure, which pushes it in, makes it a concave shape, puts pressure on the outside. Then when we actually cool it down, uh, it sees a colder object at one side. So it, it cools and it cools at the center. And so that can also add other stresses to the window. So we'll go ahead and um, do a full cool down and see if it can make it. So hopefully this time, fingers crossed, we're gonna get uh, a solid window that doesn't explode. All right, it didn't work. We put the new window in, we cooled it down. It worked great. And then just a little while after it had been cold for a couple hours, uh, we had another puff of gas come in, which looks like it messed up the vacuum. And we had the same thing, full system warm up, all the gas dumping through the emergency valve, basically turbo overloading, the worst case scenario. You know, I guess there are worst case scenarios, but it's a pretty bad one. Uh, it's not something we like to do. So I'm gonna take off the um, that front window and we're gonna inspect it and try to figure out what happened. All right, here's a big reveal. So the chip that we had in the front is still right there. Uh, well, this is gonna be annoying. I don't see anything else wrong, so we're gonna have to uh, get in there and look closer. All right, I'm gonna try taking off the uh, screws and see if we can find any problems with this. It was, uh, we couldn't really see the, cr the crack on the bottom. If it's a piece of glass, it's just cracked off and shifted again a little bit. Can't really see it uh, if it's shifted back into position, so we may have to remove the optic to, to see what's going on. I don't see anything obvious. Let's try to remove it and see what we got. I got the persuader. If this optic was cracked, I would not do this. There she is. Same symptom as last time. We got a uh, nice big crack blown out of the back here. So this is interesting phenomenology. This is a clearly a bad design. Um, same problem twice in a row on a new flat surface. So this optic is shot. We do have another one, so that's not a big deal but we're gonna to have to change the design and we may have to change the material. Looking at a cold window and that's, so the center is cooling down and that's putting extra stress on it compared, just more stress than just the atmosphere pushing on the window. So uh, as usual, time for a redesign.